This is John Black, Super Chemist. Before I go into how to make benzyl chloride, I want to go over these three, real quick, these three reactions, because they're so similar that it's unreal. Friedel Kraft's acylation, alkylation, and electrophilic halogenation. I put chlorination because no, I spelled it wrong. Because uh, I use chlorine as my halogen. <clears throat> but I want you to look at all these. You start at benzene, you're adding stuff to the ring, see? I want you to notice that all you're doing, see this part here and this part here? See how they're the same exact thing, right? They're all just connected. If you take out the green part, everything is exactly the same, right? You have your iron chloride, right? Trichloride. <clears throat> it acts as a Lewis acid over here. Here's a picture of it. It has these empty P orbitals here. So the chlorine... <clears throat> even though it's neutral, you know what I mean, they, they are covalent, they share evenly the electrons, you know, there's, uh, it does have a, a um, induced spontaneous uh, dipole sometimes, you know, <clears throat> it fluctuates, you know, it's not perfect, <laughs> sometimes this chlorine's positive a little bit, sometimes this one is, you know what I mean, it goes back and forth. That is not enough to do a good reaction, though. that's why you throw in this Lewis base, right? The electrons can come up into this uh, empty orbital, and now you got all these chlorines, four electronegative chlorines, grabbing at the electron density. It's going to make this positive, right? By making this positive, now your benzene, it's not negative, but all those double bonds, it has a lot of electron density, right? <clears throat> now this is positive, positive enough to react with the benzene. You're doing the same thing. Now, if you replace the C with an R, now instead of adding this chlorine, you'll add the R. If you replace this with an acid uh, chloride, an acyl chloride, then the, the acyl group will add on. It's that simple. But you see how they're all the same exact... I mean, there's subtle differences, you know what I mean? Like this one... Uh, you have to use stoichiometric, stoichiometric amounts for the uh, catalyst. You know what I mean? Um, you know, little fluctuations in, in what you do, but it's basically the same exact experiment. Um, but anyways, let's get to this one right here, because this one is what compares to what we're doing. <clears throat> you basically have your product, the benzene ring, put some chlorine in, it reacts with the iron that's in there, and you'll make iron chloride, that will make this adduct, and you'll have this being positive enough to attack the benzene ring, okay? Without the metal, it won't attack the ring, you know what I mean? It, it might a little slight bit, you know what I mean? You're going to have, if you do this reaction, you're going to have trace amounts, even though there's no metal in there. But if you put metals in, especially a Lewis acid, you're going you're gonna to attach it to the ring. Now, how do we get it to attach to this benzyl position right here? See, we're starting out with toluene, same thing as benzene, but we got this methyl group. The difference is we use no metal catalyst, right? We use UV light. And UV light, well, the whole point about UV light is it makes free radicals. It will do a uh, homolytic uh, cleavage of this bond, right? and you'll have two free radical chlorines. Now, the great thing about, you know, you can do this to an alkane, like let's say you had uh, hexane. You use free radicals on it, it's just gonna pull off all, because free radicals like to, like this, they like to take the hydrogens, okay? They don't like to take them from the benzene because then that messes up the resonance structure of the, of the ring, you know what I mean? But, this hydrogen on here, and it's the only hydrogen that, that really is good, is the benzyl hydrogen. It's actually the best hydrogen. It's nine times better than a hydrogen that's on, say, an alkane. All those hydrogens are nothing. This is like nine times more reactive than those hydrogens. Okay? So when you use your UV light, it's going to make the free radical chlorines. And the chlorines, what are they going to attack? They want to attack a hydrogen. They can't take it out of the ring. So what they do is they take one of the benzyl hydrogens, make hydrochloric acid, 
And now you have a free radical. This would be a free radical, this toluene, right? And what does it do? I mean, the whole place is filled up with chlorine, so it's going to grab a chlorine, right? And then that, the other part of the chlorine becomes a free radical, and it continues the, the cycle. It'll grab another hydrogen from another toluene. That toluene will become a free radical, grab a chlorine. Now it's benzyl chloride, but the chlorine that was left, you know, that was stuck to this chlorine is now a free radical. It starts to, it's just a cycle that goes on and on and on. Now this would be your apparatus, right? This is your dripping in whatever to make your chlorine. I usually use, uh, what do I use? Uh, calcium uh, hypochlorite because it's cheap and you can get it at the pool place. And uh, I make my chlorine. It would come in here. This would have some kind of drying agent in here. And uh, maybe sulfuric acid or some kind of drying agent. And you would bubble it to the drying agent. And then you would bubble it into your reaction mixture. Your reaction mixture just has the toluene in it. Okay. And you're boiling it. You're refluxing that. You can't just do this at room temp. you got to have this. You know, you got your condenser on here. You're refluxing it. It's boiling it as hard as you can get it. Then you send in your chlorines, you know, not quick, not super fast or whatever, but not slow enough where you are going to have a suck back. You know what I mean? You don't want a suck back. So you have this boiling, um, you have your chlorine coming in, and then you would have to have either, you know, I'll go into the UV source, but you'd have some kind of UV source uh, putting ultraviolet light on there to do the reaction and make the chlorine um into free radicals. And you can see I have a little tube here going into it. This is just an empty container, a suck back. And then I have a container here, which would be like sodium hydroxide and water. And that way the HCl that you make would come in here, react with that, and make sodium chloride. And hopefully you wouldn't have any HCl coming out. You should do it in a fumoid though. Um, and that's pretty much the whole reaction. But when you make benzyl chloride, right, the benzyl chloride is more reactive than the toluene to these free radical chlorines that you're making, right? So once you have so much benzyl chloride, it'll start trying to make um, benzyl dichloride. You know what I mean? It'll start trying to add two chlorines, and it'll try to add three chlorines. And I'm going to get into how you can prevent that or at least keep it down to a minimum. Um, might not be this video, but maybe the next one. We'll see how long this takes. Because I'm really, I'm not going to try to not edit a lot of stuff. I usually I have an hour video and I edit out three quarters of it just so I can get it into a 15 minute video. I'm not going to do that with this video. Um, you might say, why is the benzyl position, see this is your toluene, why is your benzyl position so much more uh, reactive than, than say a regular you know if you had uh, hexane um, you know those hydrogens aren't as, as uh, reactive as this hydrogen. I want you to look at let's say this was a free radical okay and this is the same if it was uh, you know a negative charge or whatever. Um, you have resonance this once this becomes a free radical this electron can resonate throughout this ring and help you know uh, distribute electron uh, density so it's more smooth more spread out you know what I mean and because look you can jump this over to here and then your bond comes back jump this over to here your bond comes back jump this over to here and your bond flips back you have five one two three four five resonance structures okay and this charge is distributed throughout these five places. One, two, three, four, five. It's never put on these positions here. But that's okay. Five is a lot of uh, resonance structures. So that's why if you take the hydrogen off, that's why I would rather take this hydrogen because it's so um, stable you know, because it can do this resonance throughout the ring and, and distribute the electron density more more 
uh, evenly. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into UV sources. All right. Um, now let's go over UVA, UVB, and UVC first. Those are the three types of uh, UV um, waves. And here's the nanometers they are. Long wave, medium wave, short wave. Right? This is the shortest one. Long waves are like black lights, uh, soft UV. Most of that, if not all of it, makes it through the ozone layer to us. Okay? B... This is the medium wavelength, mostly is absorbed by the sun. Only a little bit of that comes through. And the short wave is completely absorbed by the sun, uh, or by the ozone. Um, it's called hard, hard UV. Um, so my whole point is this. You can use the sun to do this reaction. Just get some mirrors and direct the sun into where the hose is coming out, where the chlorine comes out right here. You know what I mean? And then you, uh, you'll make your free radicals, you know what I mean? Um, my whole point is, though, this. If you can use the sun, and these are all completely absorbed by the ozone layer, you know 100 to 280 nanometer you don't need. You know what I mean? It'd be better, probably, because it's more powerful, but... It's unneeded. If you can do it with the sun and, and you don't get none of that, then you don't need it. This one mostly is absorbed by the ozone layer. I keep saying the sun. It should be absorbed by the ozone layer. Uh, <clears throat> but look how it's only like 20, uh, 20 and 15. What's that? 35 nanometer difference between these two. You know what I mean? Like this is 180 difference. This is, you know, 85 difference. This is just a little bit of, of whatever. What I'm guessing is that probably the lower the wavelength, the more chance that it has to to be absorbed by the ozone. So my guess is that probably about 300 nanometers is what starts getting through the ozone to us. So I would guess 300 to 400 nanometers. That's the highest you know the wavelength can be. If it's more than that, it's not UV. So I would say between 300 and 400 nanometers is what you need to do this reaction. Like if you wanted to buy a light that uh, just, you know, does UV, you would need a UV light that is between 300 and 400 nanometers, meaning the wavelength. Uh, I would guess 300 to 350 nanometer would be the best. I don't know, though. I'm just guessing here. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, these are facts. You know, I looked up what the UVA and this and that. Um, but I'm just using logic and guessing, basically, here. So, like I said, the sun is 300, 400 nanometers, um, which is good enough to do this reaction. Um, I'm going to either use the sun or I'm going to use a halogen light. A halogen light, and I went. I made a video about this. You know, my UV source uh, will be a halogen light. It produces <coughs> UV light from 300 to 400 nanometers. The bad thing about it is only a small fraction of the light emitted is actually UV. But I think people have told me that it's it's good enough. Um, you put the light. You know, you'd have your flask here. And you put your light like right on it. And that way it'll also heat it up because those things get real hot. Um, and you'd have your heat from it and you would have your UV from it. <clears throat> now if you're going to buy a special UV light that just does UV, keep in mind just getting 300 to 400 nanometer, <clears throat> that doesn't mean it's going to work because of a thing called intensity. And I didn't look this up. I don't know if that's the correct word or terminology. But by intensity, I mean if you have one photon per second, you know, because it's a type of uh, UV...